we should probably do that. So the plan, so let's do this as an example right here. Get the calculator showing. So if we have this equation, uh, p squared is equal to a cubed. Now the sun, or Mercury, pardon me, travels around in 88 days. But we have to kind of think this. We, we want to do distances, and this is in days, so that's a little confusing. So what I want to do is I want to take 88 days, and I want to divide it by 365 days. That's how many days there are in a, a year for Earth. We're going to kind of compare it to Earth. So I'm going to take my calculator, take 88, and I'm going to divide it by uh, 365. And so this is the period of Mercury with respect to the Earth. It's 0.241, so that's P. So that's 0 0.241 squared. That's the number, the percentage, if you will, 24% of um, the Earth's, and that's equal to A cubed. And so now I want to find what A is. Now to do that, I'm going to take the 0.241, I'm going to square it. And what I get on my calculator is I get 0 0.0. 058, I'll round that to a 1, equals a cubed. Now, it's hard to find a cubed. How would I do that? Well, we have to do something fancy mathematically. You may not know this. It's not hard. It's a button on your calculator. You can take what's called the cubed root of this. The cubed root of any cubed number will be its number. So the cubed root of a cubed will be equal to a. Now, the cubed root is a button on your calculator, but it's kind of hidden. I have to click on the math button. And if you look right here, uh, there's the 4, and that's the one I want, the cubed cubed root of 0 0.0581, close the parentheses, and I get A to be equal to 0 0.387 astronomical units. Okay, so the average distance from the sun for Mercury is 0.387 astronomical units, where for Earth it's one astronomical unit, so it's in AU, not AW. Um, 1 AU, that's the distance from the Earth to the Sun, and this is the distance from the Sun to Mercury. So Kepler's third law is a mathematical equation that's pretty cool to kind of figure out, isn't it? Well, and that concludes Kepler. Let's now move to our next guy, probably one of the most fascinating individuals that may have ever lived, Galileo Galilei, or Galilei, I don't know how to pronounce it exactly, 1564 to 1642. He was an Italian astronomer, philosopher, physicist. He, like, did everything. He was unbelievable, the things that he uh, studied and such. Okay, he was the first to see the value in a telescope. He himself, or a common mis misconception, contrary to popular thought, he himself did not invent the telescope. He just improved upon it. He made ones that are probably just as good as like binoculars that people purchase today. In fact, uh, not even that good a pair of binoculars. The inventor was actually Johannes Lippershe. He was a Dutch eyeglasses maker. Fun facts to know and tell. Okay, you don't probably need to know that for any test or anything, but it's interesting to know that. Okay. But what did he see with his telescope? The first thing he saw well, the moons of Jupiter. Now, this is pretty cool, okay? Um, and this changed everything because, you see, he started looking at the stars, and he looked at Jupiter with his telescope, and he saw these little dots out there, and he said, wait a second, there's something else. Remember, they... Uh, the common belief from, from the Greeks was that the heavens don't change. Remember the guy pointing upwards? They don't change. There's no changing. And so he... Uh, uh, Galileo said... Well, there's something else out there. There is something more out in the universe. And he, uh, as he studied these over the course of days, he realized that these orbited, um, I'm not sure he realized they were ellipses or whatever, but they orbited around Jupiter. And so he began to say, hmm, there's more out there with this cool telescope thing. And these are, in fact, uh, better pictures now that we have much higher quality telescopes, uh, better pictures of the moons of Jupiter. In fact, one of them is named Galileo. Okay. He also was able to see the rings of Saturn. The rings of Saturn actually confused him because um, he, when he looked at it, uh, Saturn up close, he realized it wasn't a, a perfect uh, circle, turns out, or sphere. Turns out it is, but, the, but his telescope was just so bad that it kind of looked in a weird shape, and it would change its shape depending on what angle you were looking at it. Sometimes you were looking sideways at the rings, and sometimes, you know, Saturn would have the rings, you know, more like this. And so it would change, and it would confuse him, uh, but it did show him something. Another thing he uh, was able to look at is he studied Venus. He took his telescope slash binocular deal, and he was able to look at the uh, at Venus. Well, it turns out Venus has phases, like um, well, like the moon, 
like you know it's got Gibeus and it's got all those different phases and full moon and all those that we talked about in a previous podcast uh, yeah and so he said hmm that uh, indicates some interesting things all right, and then the last thing that he saw is when he just kind of looked at the stars, he found that there were, well, there were more stars. There were more stars than he had anticipated. That You remember that they said the heavens can't change, that there's like 4,000 stars or something like that. Well, guess what? When you look at the stars with the telescope or even a cheap pair of binoculars, you see more that are there. And so you can't just count how many there are because there's like, well, there's more. And uh, that got him into some trouble, turns out. Um, um, he was Italian, so he was in, in uh, Rome and that whole area where the Vatican is. And so the Catholic Church kind of had a beef with him because they had kind of bought into the whole thing that, that, that the heavens don't change and there is no changing and they don't move and this kind of a thing. And so the church got kind of mad. This is Galileo right here, and then the church kind of getting mad at him. And uh, it turns out he got put on house arrest and... Um, he had to kind of uh, recant and say, well, I didn't really believe those things, even though he probably still did, because he kind of at the end of his life wrote a book about it and uh, what he believed, that, that the earth was, you know, uh, was not the center of the universe, et cetera, et cetera. Um, remember this guy right here, he's pointing up saying it can't change, and the other guy's saying, well, they do. And so um, Galileo was actually um, showing the world um, that, in fact, that we've got this, uh, this universe that's much more complex than you would expect. So what does the model look like? What was the Renaissance view of the solar system? Well, it really, it's kind of where we're at today. With the sun at the center, we got Mercury, etc., and all these planets. Notice they're not in circles, they're in ellipses. That's the Kepler um, edition. And then we've got all our different planets. There's even Pluto right there. And um, the model that was discovered and figured out by Kepler, by Galileo, by Bra and uh, Copernicus is really the present day model. Now what's going on on the outside with the stars? Uh, we'll get to that later. But this really changed the uh, understanding of the solar system. So that ends our podcast number two. Three, I think. <laughs>